All right, so now that we um, know how to enter equations into ease and solve them, and we've uh, talked a little bit about how to use ease to keep track of units, let's go ahead and do another exercise. Um, this one has two different uh, questions. So here's the first question as a, a dynamics question, basically. And you have a pulley. Uh, and uh, it's lifting this mass and you can see the radius the thickness and the density of the pulley material and you're putting a force of 120 newtons on the rope and the, the question then is uh, with that 120 newtons uh, you need to figure out how fast the mass is accelerating and you can um, neglect uh, any kind of friction for this uh, problem but you, you can't neglect the moment of inertia of the pulley that's that's important uh, when you're when you're calculating it all right so that's the first question the second question is uh, a fluids question uh, so basically a buoyancy question you can see here that there's a cylinder that's hollow and airtight and it's being lowered into uh, a body of water um, and uh, the cylinder is uh, two foot in diameter and ten foot long. It's got um, uh, three eighths inch uh, thick walls, and it's made of stainless. And the question then is, um, how far does the cylinder have to be submerged uh, before the cable goes slack? So basically, before the cylinder starts to float. Um, and here's the density of water. So I'll go ahead and. Uh, you can work on those and then uh, when you're ready to compare your answer to, to mine basically uh, come back and we'll go through uh, how we would use ease to solve these two problems. All right so um, let's go ahead and solve uh, these two questions um, and we'll start with the pulley problem and we will um, use the suggested method for dealing with units that we talked about in the last video and that is that we will take all of the inputs to the problem and I guess there's what five of them and we will uh, immediately enter them and convert them to base SI units so um, that's what I'm doing here uh, you can see everything is uh, in meters or kilograms or uh, you know base SI units like that once I have that done, then I'll go through the process of actually um, solving the problem. And you know, one thing that is important to realize is that ease is just a calculator. It's a nice calculator in the sense that it will solve systems of equations versus most calculators will just solve one equation at a time. But still, you know, coming up with those equations is sort of on you. So we have to um, go through this uh, in a systematic way and make sure that we're entering a set of equations that can be solved. And the other thing that we should do when we're using ease is um, enter the smallest number of equations uh, that we can at any one time and then solve and make sure that everything looks okay and then keep going. And, and this is part of using ease effectively, which we will come back to in a later video. But it's an important sort of uh, strategy for, for making ease converge um, most reliably. So here's um, the first set of equations that I came up with. The first is I can think about what the volume of the pulley is. Uh, so that's this equation here and you'll notice that um, that equation it adds one equation but it also adds one variable so I, so I can go ahead and enter that which I'll do now and I can solve and I can uh, make sure that the units of volume are meters cubed and they are and so I probably haven't uh, made a mistake yet and uh, the next equation then is that the mass is the volume times the density so again I added one variable mass but I added one equation so I might as well go ahead and enter that into my equations window and that's what I'm doing here and uh, go ahead and solve and uh, make sure that the units of mass are kilograms right and again these these unit checks that I'm doing are really checking the unit consistency of my of my solution and then finally I have the moment of inertia of the pulley around the center line which is the mass times the radius squared divided by 2 so I'll go ahead and uh, enter that one in as well you know again that's that's one equation one unknown and 
I can solve that and make sure the units of moment of inertia are kilograms meters uh, squared. All right, and then we move on to um, the rest of the problem. So the rest of the problem isn't quite as simple in the sense that um, probably not going to be able to enter at one equation at a time. Um, the first thing that I need to realize is that the acceleration, the linear acceleration of the mass, is related to the angular acceleration of the pulley. Right? And you can see that equation here. So the linear acceleration of the mass is just the angular acceleration of the pulley times the radius of the pulley. Uh, I don't know the acceleration. That's what I'm looking for. And I also don't know the angular acceleration. So this is one equation and two unknowns. Um, so I can enter it, but I can't solve it yet. So probably I'm not even going to enter it until I get a complete set of equations. Um, the next equation that I wrote down here is just that the sum of the forces applied to this mass has to be equal to the, the mass times acceleration. So there's two forces here. There's the force of tension pulling it up. There's the force of gravity, m times g, um, pulling it down, and then mass times acceleration. And so I have added an equation here, but I've also added an unknown, which is the force of tension, f sub t. So now I have two equations and three unknowns, so I'm still not done. And I need another equation, and that's this last equation, which is that the sum of the torques uh, on the pulley uh, has to be equal to its moment of inertia times its angular acceleration. So let's see, there's two torques on the pulley. There's a torque from the rope here, uh, and then there's a torque from the, uh, the tension in this cable here, uh, and then you have that being equal to uh, moment of inertia times angular acceleration. So this is now three equations and three unknowns. Right? The unknowns are uh, acceleration, angular acceleration, and tension. And so I can enter these three equations um, into ease. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and it'll take a little while. Uh, once uh, that's complete, then I can try to solve those and see if I get a solution. Um, before I take that solution too seriously, I probably ought to set the units of uh, my new variables. So I'm doing that here. And uh, make sure that there's no unit. Uh, warnings and there isn't and based on uh, this solution then you can see the uh, acceleration of the mass uh, right here all right so let's do question two um, I guess I'm going to assume that you can do this one a little faster because it's uh, sort of the same process all these end up being kind of the same process uh, what we'll do first of all is uh, enter all of the inputs uh, so here's all the inputs we'll enter them all into ease and convert them all to base SI units. Um, so that's using the convert function sort of over and over again. And then I'll start to think about how can I come up with the set of equations that I have to solve in order to solve this problem. And uh, one thing I'd like to figure out is the force of gravity associated with the, um, with the cylinder. So the volume of stainless steel is uh, the volume of two end caps, so that's here. You can see the area of a disc multiplied by the thickness, and then this two is because there's a top and a bottom. Uh, and then you add to it the uh, volume of the of the outer shell of the of the tube, so the tube wall. And then if I want the force of gravity, I just take that volume, multiply it by the density of steel and gravity, and I have the force of gravity. So these are uh, equations that I can enter one at a time, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. And set the units and make sure the units check and all that good stuff. stuff. Uh, and then I'm going to think about uh, the rest of the equations that I need to, to add. And there's probably different ways to do this, but here's how I did it. I said that the other thing I'd like to do is calculate the buoyancy force. So um, I need to figure out, first of all, the volume of water that's displaced. So that is uh, the cross-sectional area of the, of the tube times the length that the tube is submerged into the water. That's that volume. This is one equation and two unknowns. So I'm going to hold off. I'm going to enter it into ease. The uh, force of buoyancy is the volume of displaced water times the density of water times gravity. So here I've added another equation, but I've added another unknown. So again, I think I'll hold off uh, until I add one more equation, and that is that uh, I want to know uh, this submersion depth at the point where the force of gravity exactly equals the force of buoyancy, right? So that there's no tension in this cable that's being used to, to hold uh, the cylinder. So that's my last equation. And now I have three equations and three unknowns. 
I can go off to ease and enter them one at a time. Once I have all three of them entered, I can solve them. I can set the units of all of these variables and make sure that all of my uh, equations are unit consistent. And then um, finally, I can uh, look at the answer, which is this uh, submersion length. If I want the answer in feet, it's as easy as using alternate units here and saying, um, yeah, the primary units are meters, but the alternate units are feet. And that's what I've done here. So hopefully this uh, gets you uh, pretty far down the road of using ease to solve you know, real engineering problems that involve units and involve systems of equations that are not, um, are not trivial.